nice and smooth day, Sean. You see, we have the opening tonight. Everybody happy, right, Gloria Messer? The lighting seems to be good. I'm wearing a nice blouse from back from the 1800s, right? So I feel that Caterina Lancova, she's doing a pretty good job. But this one, I bought it myself. That, but she says, you see, the colors are good. So I like the pink and green and black. Very happy to have my very special guest tonight. I got to tell you, a great actor. Uh, Ken Marks. We had a nice conversation with your wife about three weeks ago. Laura Marks, mm -hmm. playwright, writer. Yes, indeed. Bethany. How is it that you came to Bethany? Because I went to see her. I, 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 Charles Cassano, one of my associate producers, he said, Sissy, you have to go and see this show. You have to go and see the show. Uh -huh. So he got me the press ticket, and I went to see the show, and I loved your work. Give oh. me five. <laughs> Let me tell you something, man. You got some energy. You got some chops. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, sure, sure. And I, like I was talking <laughs> with Laura, how do you, you know, how does it work when you have, you know, your wife writing a play and you doing the play? I mean, do you guys... Well, I was, just, I was saying to someone today on the phone that it was on opening night, the audience stands up and cheers, and uh, there I am on stage taking a bow, and I look right at Laura, and she's in the audience, and we're like, and I'm like, wow, this really, we did it. Yeah. We did it. So she's amazing. In a, you know, she lost her job for a few years back, and she started writing this play. Yeah, and, she told us and that. And all, all that story. And, and uh, I had done a, so many of the readings of this play, and I, we used to dream, wouldn't it be great? To wouldn't it be so exciting it? if we ever got a chance to do it here in New York at a good theater and a good production? That would be that's such a dream. God, let's make that happen if we can. Yeah, you guys did. And we did it. And then we had that moment of... The good reviews and everything that came after was just sort of gravy in a way. Right, right. It's a bonus. Well, what, yeah. Right? I and mean, a great bonus, but that moment of, wow, we dreamed about something and it really could And happen. to make it happen. Yeah. How you guys met? I'm sorry, I shouldn't bring that question first. But I, I, I said to Laura, you guys, oh, you gotta, I gotta bring, she said, you gotta bring my husband here. But I said, how do you guys met? Oh, she didn't tell you the story? I think she did, but I wanna hear your thought. I wanna hear your story. Well, when I met her, she was an actress. Yes, yeah. she was acting before. Yeah, and, sh and uh, a friend of mine who was a director was doing a production of Playboy of the Western World. It's an old play from the early 20th century. Uh -huh. And uh, she came from Chicago. It was a production from the Steppenwolf Theater Company in Chicago, brought to the Long Wharf Theater in New Haven. And uh, Doug Hughes was the director. He called me up. He says, we're losing an actor. Would you come and play this part? And that's where we met. Now, the thing about it is yeah, she was married at the time. Oh, I don't think is she does she does she bring that? I don't think she did. She didn't bring that up. That, that's the thing. She and you guys felt the connection. And we was connection, but I had to say, I I can't exactly remember, but I had a bad I had some bad experiences because you go out on the road a lot and you meet people and sometimes they're involved and sometimes they're not and I had said no more being involved with people who are no involved. No more headaches. No more. And uh, so Laura, God love her, she got uninvolved. Yeah. And she came to me and she said, all right, I'm, I'm free now. How we, remarkable. We, how we had a little moment. We were sitting in the park in New Haven. Uh -huh. And she said to me, okay, so I'm uninvolved. I'm uninvolved now. Now what? And wow. it was really great because we actually kind of looked at each other. And you guys knew. We said, all right. And we knew that. What this was going to be leading to was marriage and t a, t a real commitment. Right. You were, not, you were not scared? No? Just uh, a bit? You know, I was 38 years old. I'd been around for a while. So, I, I, you know, I was ecstatic, actually, because yeah. <laughs> I had a totally different way my life was going to be going by that point. I was going to be a you know, single fellow with girlfriends and going out on the road and doing jobs. Because actors, I guess, we're crazy people. Kind. That's right. We're a little nutty. Yeah. We're not normal. Ellen Burstyn said it a hundred times at the actor's studio. Guys, what we do is not normal. No, it's a weird thing. This is not normal. No. But this is what you do, yeah. and you have so much fun on that stage, yeah. man. I'm so glad you came to see the show. Oh, yes, I did. I was like, I, we, we were bragging about you when I brought your wife here. Oh, I nice. couldn't stop talking about you because you're so passionate on stage, and you're such a good listener, and your relationship with the audience is so powerful. Well, that's all in the play, and you know? all that stuff is, is very much And you much too. In the Come play. on, you got the talent. You got the chops. Come on, you got to take some credits. Okay. Well, right? I, I'm almost here 30 years in New York City. 
Long so, time. Yeah, a long time. I came, I actually did uh, graduate work at Yale. I did Yale Drama School. Awesome. It came out. It took me a long time to forget everything they taught me so I could get back to acting again. Look at that. <laughs> Going back in time, talking about your acting experiences. Can you go back in time a little bit? And do you remember the first play that it got an impression in you? The first play, well, the first play like as a professional as or a just... As a professional performer. Yeah. You know, um, in 1986, Jerry Zachs, who you know, mm -hmm. was casting. He had done a production of The Foreigner, which was a Larry Shue play that he had a great success with downtown. And they were doing the West Coast premiere of it. And I got cast in one of the roles. And he took me out there. And uh, we had uh, Imogene Coca. Do you remember her? From uh, Sid Caesar and your show of shows, the great star from the 50s. I think so. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not a good liar, though. But I'm not. A, <laughs> but go on, go and on. Go and on. Charlene Tilton from Dallas was in this. And, uh -huh. and uh, Rene Aubergenois, who's a great actor, movies and theater and stuff. And Jerry brought us out there, and it was a big, big friggin' hit. And I was good in it. I won an award, and I was all that stuff. But it was the first time that I, I was with guys who were. Doing it, had been doing it as long as I have right now. Right. And we were all together, and I was like, oh, I belong. This just wasn't a thing downtown with, like, five other guys who are also 25 years old. This is with veterans and people who know what they're Right, who've been around for a long Suddenly time. Suddenly, I'm, I'm, I'm playing with those people. Right. And I can, I can, I, I have a, I got a, I think I can, I can do it. I think I can do it. Yeah, how <laughs> remarkable. But um, you see, yeah. I'm watching Ken in the monitor for a second. It's very interesting. He doesn't look like the way he looks in real life. That kind of throws me off, which well, I think is wonderful. I should have, I should have worn a tie. No, 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 forget about a tie. I want you to be, you know, but it's kind of interesting because I'm, 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 I have your face right in front of me and I had the monitor right behind you. Yeah. It is. It looks different. Oh, I look different here. Yeah. Which do you prefer? I, I think <laughs> in person. I can, your That's eyes the right look thing black to say. and the screen, right? And here, your eyes are green, light green. That's right, hazel eyes or something. So, like that, right? plays, work. Austin Pennington was sending a love to you. We're talking about you, Austin. Yeah. Every time that I bring actors, every time, everybody knows Austin Pennington. Yeah. Everybody loves Austin. Well, I did this Why play. Why do you think we're so upset with this man? Well, I did this play of his called Orson's Shadow back at the Barrow Street about, uh, now it's now seven years ago. Is that possible? Yeah. Seven years ago. And uh, David Cromer was the, actually the director of it, but I was replacing somebody. David came for a couple weeks, and then he left. And the part is very difficult. I played Laurence Olivier. And oh, wow. wow. Austin certainly, you know, he wrote it. He knew the play very well. And he came every night. And then after the show, he'd go, oh, that was fantastic. That was great. Now, I want you to think about the fact that you're in a small cage and you want to get out. And each night he would come and he would say some little it's thing. Little thing. Exactly. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. no, that was fantastic. Now just open the window or right. something. And in your imagination, I'd go home going, yes, I've got to open the window. Oh, of course. Open the window. Right. And the next night I'd be opening the window and then he'd come back and he'd say something else. And always he would talk in the most positive terms right he's and the a, most generous and yes and in the most generous terms and that was such a, a gift yeah. and also such an education to me because i've done a little teaching i do a little teaching at nyu and i've done a little teaching at northwestern university where i was a, a undergraduate and that generosity these kids need right because i've i've experienced teachers to me, that were not generous, right. and were very brutal, brutal, very Liz Strasberg, Eve. which I well, everybody's different. Whatever yeah. works for you, Ken. Right. You know, it's like my husband says: when you go to see a fight, the public, right? We go to see the fight. We don't care much about how many hours you train, sparring sessions, and running. Yeah, it's a lot of work into it. But at the end of the day, people go to see a fight. Right. 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 So acting is a is a very subjective process yeah but one of the w and one of the ways that you do it is you kind of have to learn to stay out of your own way right right and when austin was saying these things to me i wasn't thinking oh my performance was kind of terrible Could we judge ourselves all the time it's so man. terrible right we're we're you know we're always this far from judging ourselves and right i, I can't it's get my thumb and finger Finn. close it's enough insane <laughs> how much but we somehow judge he took that away from me. he took that took that away from me now people that i've worked with before who say ah you know you didn't really do the thing 
And so part of your energy is having to kind of find your that judgmental part of you right. and turn it off. Right, but how do you turn it off? Can't right, if you're spending a lot of time doing that, you can't do the work. Right, you you're, can't. Because you're going, oh, he told me not to move, put my hand down. Gosh, right. Darn it, I'm doing it again. Oh. oh. It's like pretty much, I, I, it can, I can't help it with, compare it with boxing. It's like when you're in the corner, my husband says that trainers, they have to be very specific about what they say to their right. fighters. Yes. And it's got to be, you got to say the right thing. Right, because emotionally, we're emotionally, so they fragile. they're very fragile. That's right. Uh, and you have to be able to make that connection and, and say the right words, be accurate, be specific. Yeah. And, and just, you know, it's very interesting how actors were very... Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't read reviews, and I haven't read reviews for Good many, for many years. Good for you. You're not missing much at all. <laughs> I think the critics, they hate themselves to a certain degree. I mean, I seen, honestly, I seen work that, in my opinion, I don't think is that great, and boom, all of a sudden they got great reviews. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, I don't want to mention any papers, but I'm a little picky, I'm a little difficult, and yeah. tough to please, Ken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, I, all actors, we are tough yeah. to please. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, I stopped reading reviews about 20 years ago. And you don't and miss it. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you something funny. <laughs> I, I, uh, I was up in Boston doing a, 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 a George Bernard Shaw play, and they handed you at the very end, a big sheaf of reviews, uh -huh. and I said, "Well, I'm not going. I'm not going to read these. I haven't read them so far. I'm, I'm, I'll put them in a box, and uh, you know, whatever. I'll, you know, maybe I'll read them sometime." So I move here, I move there. The box gets put in a, a, a bunch of boxes, and then about ten years after that, I'm moving again, and I find the box, and I say, "Look at that! There's all those reviews. I'm going to sit down and read these things after ten years." And I start to read them, and some of them aren't good, and it ruins my day. <laughs> right. <laughs> ten years later, I'm just a wreck. Now, cut to about six weeks ago, we're doing Bethany, and um, Laura knows I don't read reviews, and I said, but we're talking about something, and she says, you know, I said, last night, I said, last night, you know, I thought I was a little, and I can't remember quite what it was that I thought I was a little of, but it was something that I was thinking of, and she goes, yeah, I noticed that you, and she said something, I noticed that you smiled a lot or something. I thought I smiled a lot. Oh, God. Oh my God! I did smile a lot, and it you know it just began a whole yeah, it's, thing. Yeah, it's and, crazy. <laughs> and it finally, she's stop. going, "No, no, you didn't smile. You didn't smile right. a lot. I, I meant to say that I love your smile. You have a beautiful smile. Many people here. Let's go meet some of the people who love your smile." Uh -huh. And then suddenly, she had to backtrack and try to figure out a way to get me out of the right that little place. It's so the little place that we go so easy. We so can fragile. stay there forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ken. Spider-Man. Can we talk about Spider-Man? This sure. is very interesting. Speaking of forever. <laughs> we can, honestly, this is such a remarkable achievement. Yes, two and a half years. Two and a half years doing yep. Spider-Man, playing Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben. Kill me, crucify me, I'm not Jesus, but I haven't seen the play. That is okay. And Have you I, ever seen the movies? Uh, yes, of course. Yeah, so then you know the uh, Uncle Ben story. Uncle Ben, yes, yeah. yes, of course. And um, tell me about the experience. Talk, talking about, you know, the director, this incredible woman coming out with the show, with the ideas, and shifting directors, and all the craziness, and all the publicity behind it, all the problems, man. <laughs> How do you guys kept it together? Let's, let's, let's talk about that. Well, I'll tell you a little bit about the first day of rehearsal. We were all, uh, first of all, there was about a hundred people there. People who had been working on this for a long time. Designers, and the costume designer, and the people who'd cast the play, and anyone who had had anything to do with the production of Spider-Man up to that point showed up for this thing, except Bono and Edge. Oh, because Bono and Edge were not there. You're in my mind, I'm a big fan. Okay. Sure, big fan. And uh, they were in Australia, or they were already on the road with uh, whatever it was that they were doing. Uh huh. But I can't tell you the excitement in the room. Bono.